Hello, it's the beat. Hi, it's Nav. What up, Nav? What's going on? Peace. I'm glad you could take take some time and call in. I didn't think you was going to make it again today. No problem. Yeah, I did. Word up. Appreciate you calling in, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when we get to talk, this is me and my homeboy, City Hollow, over there. You want to say what's, what's up, City? What's going on with you, Nav? Nice to meet you. What's up, City? How you doing? All right, all right. We do a show called The Box State Mic Drop, and then, you know, I like to call it kicking the actual factuals when we get to co- talk to uh, cool f- cats like yourself. You dig? All right. Word up. So we're talking to the first brown boy that got it popping right now inside the box. They might drop K Chief City Hollow. What inspired you to pursue a career in music and who are some of your biggest influences? Um, what inspired me to uh, to see music was like I just had a fascination with how songs are made from a young age. Mm-hmm. And like one of my uncles used to make like Indian music in a studio. So when I went with him over there, like I got like the information of how everything's made, you know? And then I just started from there at, like, 16. Oh, you've been doing it for a minute. Yeah. That's what's up, Nav, man. Hollo here. Uh, number two, your your music often blends with different genres and styles, so how do you approach the creative process when working with a new song or project? What, what was the end of the question, sorry? Uh, how do you approach the creative process when working on a new song or a project? Um... I think the main thing is like about like how I'm feeling that day. If I'm feeling like, you know, in my head about things, I maybe I'll make it like a serious song. If I'm feeling like, you know, having fun, I'll make something more fun. Um, when it comes to like serious songs, it could be anything. It could be like something about myself or about a girl or about whatever. When it comes to fun songs, it could be like like rage music or like club happy music. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. That's fresh to death. So I saw something the other day that you said you never have to pay for collaborations, which is fresh to death and mind-blowing. I've always wondered how that worked. You collaborate with a gang of artists like Lil Uzi Vert, Travis Scott, Gunna. How do these collaborations come about, and how do you, uh, look, for, how do you look for potential uh, collaborations with artists? I think um, between the relationships that me and my manager Cash have built and, and Sal have built over the, over the years, it's like... You know, Uzi was on tour with The Weeknd, and I was signed to EXO, so mm-hmm. in, like, 2016, 2017, we spent a lot of time together just being on tour. Um, so that was, like, organic, but see, that's, like, teamwork. Cash kind of put him on tour, and, I, and I'm around him because Cash is my manager. Mm-hmm. So it's, like, it's like a teamwork thing. And then, you know, like, for songs like Future, like, Future was introduced to me from Cash. They've been friends for, like, 10 years or something. So I feel like it's a, 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 a joint uh, effort by both of us. That's fresh. When I first got into the business, I was taught by somebody in, I was in radio and he was in Hollywood and he told me it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that that's kind of basically what you just said right there. A lot, a lot of what you know comes from uh, who you know. Ah, fresh. I like that. I like that. Uh, so <laughs> your latest album, Demons, Prote- Demons Protected by Nightmares, was released in 2022. Can you walk us through the creative process behind this project and what themes or messages you are trying to convey? Um, yeah, the, just, I was very focused on, like, song topics and, uh, having very strong, like, focused topics and better lyrics, and we did a lot of songs, we really took our time on this album, usually I don't take this long to make an album, uh-huh. and I took, like, maybe, like, over a year to do this one, wow. so it was just really, um, you know, picking the best sounds and making sure everything has strong topics, that was my main thing, I felt like a lot of songs in the past that I made, Maybe it didn't have the strongest topic, and it's just like maybe in the hook it makes sense, but in the verses it was kind of like teeters off lyrically. But I try to make everything very directed. Right. Okay. And 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 the album title. What what does that mean to you, and where did that come from? Well, one of my one of my best friends had a sweater where he put on the back, uh, "Fighting Demons Protected by Angels," and I thought it was mm. cool. So like album title is just a little bit too long, so we took the fighting out, and we were like debating if we should make it the album title. And then one day we were just playing dominoes in the studio, and I asked him, like, <laughs> where did you get that from? Was it from, like, Google or something? And he's like, nah, I just came up with that when my mom passed away. Oh, and wow. I thought that was really special. Ooh. So I just, like, said, that's, that seals the deal. I'm just going to make it. Uh, Demons so. Protected by Angels. Keeping on note with that album, yo, the artwork is crazy. How'd you come up with that? The artwork was uh, from uh, my boy Eric Parker. He had a good relationship with Cat. I'd seen his artwork on the internet and also in Cash's house, mm-hmm. uh, like, like physicals. So when Cash told me, like, yo, I was thinking of doing, like, this picture of you with Eric Parker's, like, art in the background, I thought it was amazing, you know what I mean? Yeah, that it's fresh to death, man. Your music often deals 
with themes of success, ambition, and uh, perseverance. How do these ideals relate to your personal experience, and what advice would you give to expiring artists trying to make it in the industry? Um, th- it's it's pretty accurate, you know what I mean. Like when it comes to like my songs and my my real life, like what like, what I go through, you know what I mean. Like when it comes to like flexing and stuff, we might exaggerate, but <laughs> um, for a new artist, I would say just take it like one day at a time, one song at a time. Don't 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 set too many crazy expectations for yourself because when you have too many expectations and they don't get met, it leads to disappointment. You know what I mean? Then you're back at like ground zero again. Mm-hmm. So just take it like one day at a time. I wish I had that advice when I was coming up. Ah, <laughs> dope. What was the best advice that you got coming up into the industry? Um, probably just you know always remind yourself that like somebody else is working when you're not. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And every year I see a new artist come out with a new big song, and it's like that's the truth. Somebody is working when you're not. So. You got to keep yourself, uh, you know, in the lab. Nice. Okay. Uh, so you grew up in Toronto, obviously, and your uh, your background is, you know, of Indian descent. Is it Punjabi? How do you pronounce that? I want to make sure. Yes. Okay. So how does your cultural background influence your music, and do you think it sets you apart from other artists in the industry? I mean, initially it was, like, a, a challenge because, like, you know, we didn't even show what I look like, and people didn't really know when when I when it was revealed. People were like, "Oh, I thought right. you was black. Or I thought you was this." <laughs> and it's like, whatever. So there was a challenge, but now it's like I own it, and it like keeps me being like it's, I'm unique. You know what I'm saying? And right. I, a lot of my fans and my meeting beats be like, "Thank you so much for what you do for the brown community." And I'm like, "Really? Like, like uh-huh. what, what am I doing?" And then when I go to Toronto now and I go partying and stuff, I'll see a lot of guys that look like me in the booths buying bottles. Right. So now I'm starting to understand that it kind of made it like cool to be brown. You know what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. Oh, that's fresh to death. That's fresh to death. As it should be cool to be brown. You dig? Yes, uh, sir. <laughs> exactly. And your live performance are known for high energy and engaging atmosphere. How do you prepare for a show? And what do you hope to convey through to, uh, to your fans through your live performances? Um, I, well, how I prepare is like, usually we just do like, at first I get to the show and I have to sign like 200 posters for all the meet and greets. So I sign mm-hmm. them all by hand and then I meet the fans. And once I meet the fans, I probably got like three hours before I go on stage and I'll just relax and do like really chill stuff. Like, you know, I, we love playing dominoes. Like there's a Jamaican game called six love that we play in Toronto and we, we love playing that. So we just play that until it's almost time. I'll get dressed and I'll give my, I, I make sure I give my friends, they, own uh, personal handshakes before I go on the stage. I feel like it's like a superstition thing. Like if I don't do it, I'm gonna have a bad show. And then like before my, my I'm about to get announced to go on stage, I'll visualize the end result of like me coming off stage happy. You know what I mean, sweating, whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's always how it turns out. I like to tell people if you if you believe it, you can achieve it. That's that that's that right there. Of course, one thousand. Uh, you've been in the industry for over a decade now. How do you think the music the music industry has evolved during this time, and what challenges have you faced as an artist? What, what challenges? Yeah. Um, I feel like it's faster pace. Uh, it's like less attention span, so mm. you got to really capture your audience really quick, like within like the first seven seconds of a song or something. Yeah. And um, the challenges. I mean, there's always challenges with the the, the evolution of music. We just gotta learn how to adapt and keep keep with the times. Fresh. You're also known for your fashion sense and style. Uh, how do you approach your fashion and style? And does that your personal fashion style bleed into your music? Um, nah, not really. But when it comes to like clothes, mm-hmm. I have a I have a way of uh, shopping. Like I'll buy like a sweater and I'll have nothing to match it with, and I'll just keep it just because I like it as a piece. And I'll buy pants on their own. And I don't know what I'm going to wear them, and I'll just keep it. Shoes, same thing. And it all comes together. Sometimes it'll be a sweater I bought yesterday with a pair of jeans I bought a year ago and a pair of shoes I bought three months ago, and that'll be the outfit. So I just like to get pieces. Words. Okay, so uh, uh, are you a sneakerhead? Yeah, yeah, I like to downplay it, but, like, yeah, I am. Like, I got a lot of sneakers. Do you? I, I love shoes, man. I'm a... Yeah. Do you start with your shoes or because like I, I understand what you were just saying. Like, so I bought a shirt a long time ago and then I had happened to buy some shoes that had pineapples on them and the shirt had pineapples on them. So, you know, they go together like that. Yeah. Do you do you start from a shoe base or is it just like you said, just a piece or something? 
It like it depends. Like usually, I'll start with a with a, with a top, like a sweater or a, a jacket, mm-hmm. and then I'll go from there. But say like I got some pants that is really fire, and I'm like, yeah, I gotta wear these. Like I might start with the pants, uh. and then sometimes if the shoes are like the star, I'll start with the shoes and wear like a a duller outfit so that the shoes are the star. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's I unpack for sure. Uh, lastly, my man, uh, what can what can the fans expect from you in the future, and what are some of your goals and aspirations? aspiration excuse me right now as an artist um as far as my goals i really don't know like i've done a lot in my own eyes like I, my, my standards aren't that crazy high whatever comes is a blessing but it's like what they can expect from me is you know i'm working on nav 2 which is the sequel to my self-produced original album fresh um that and also i'm i'm low-key working with wheezy again we might do emergency tsunami part two Mm. Um, and just like the elevated shows, you know, the shows are way better. I'm looking at my DMs and everybody's loving the shows. Like, thank you for the best show ever, whatever. So I'm seeing my confidence is coming out and stuff when I'm pre- presenting my music. That's fresh to death. That's See, you, you segue into all the questions that I want to get into. I was just <laughs> going to ask you, uh, what can the people expect from the show in Denver here in a couple of days? And uh, another question is, have you ever been to Denver or Colorado? I, I've been to Denver uh, quite a few times. It's just I haven't been here in like three or four years because of COVID and everything. But uh, yeah. um, what they can expect is a uh, way longer set list. Nice. I'm doing about 32 songs or 33 songs. Mm. Um, a lot more songs that I haven't have never performed, like in Denver or anywhere on tour. Okay. Uh, also, elevated production, elevated energy, elevated confidence. Everything's just way better. That's what's up, man. Uh, have you? I saw. I was watching the interview with you. Have you got any new family purchases lately? Have you bought anything for the family? I mean, I, I, I bought my dad a bed recently. Mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I don't want to spoil it, but I'm kind of working on a little house situation with him is being built. But yeah. Oh, fresh. <laughs> Fresh, yeah, man. I was watching one of your interviews, man, and it seems like you're doing everything correct. You know what I'm saying? Staying out of the the limelight in the wrong way. You give back to to the community, and you you keep it 100 with your family, man. It's fresh to death. Yep, like you're supposed to. <laughs> Word. Was there anything that we didn't ask you that you want to get across to the people before we let you go? Not really. That, that was, those are good questions right there. Well, I got, I got, I got one, two, two kind of. So, you, what's your favorite song off of Demons, Protected by Angels, and what's your favorite song to perform? My favorite song off Demons, Protected by Angels, probably be, um, ah, probably like Last of the Mohicans. Okay, I suppose. Or like Demons in My Cup, but like you know, it's not the top most popular song, but I just like that song. And um, what's my favorite song to perform? Yep. Probably myself or Beef in the Trap. Ha uh-huh, okay. yeah, yeah. I like it. Do you like <laughs> do you like producing more or rapping and making music more? Is does is is there a difference between that? I would say so. I mean there's days when I have a, a block on making beats and then I can make music and there's days that I can't write lyrics to save my life and I can make beats, so Mm. There's days I don't like one and I like the other, you know what I'm saying? That's what's up. Hey, Nav, man, we appreciate you uh, tapping in with us for the Box State Mic Drop podcast and all this other good stuff. Oh, yeah, yo, so we are we do have some uh, tickets that we're going to be giving away. Could you tell the people to go ahead and hit us up on the free iHeartRadio app for their free tickets? Hey, yo, it's your boy Nav. Hit, hit up uh, you guys right here for your free tickets on the iHeartRadio app. Hey, man, appreciate you, Nav. We're going to be up there this weekend, and we're going to turn up for you, man. All right, thank you. All right, peace. All right, peace.